breaking our figures So many haters don't like us raking papers When all we did was bring garbage proof From the underground straight to you they Used to want a screw and bow Now they wanna join the crowd <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Test Lab. I'm your host, Dr. Watt, here to be your guide in grow lighting. Today is part two of our inaugural single-ended mega test. This time, the focus is on metal halide. But if you are interested in HPS, you can see part one of the mega test under the Test Lab playlist or by clicking the link below. If you're still into metal halide, watch on. <laughs> Test Lab, our sole focus is on grow lighting, so we also want to give our viewers a basic understanding of the science behind the technologies. Whoa. Whoa. As it's our belief that an educated grower is a better grower. So what is metal halide lighting? Metal halide lamps were invented in the 1960s and are another form of high intensity discharge lamp from the family of gas discharge technologies that loosely includes high pressure sodium. But there are many key differences. Metal halides are actually much closer to mercury vapour lamps than high pressure sodium lamps as metal halide bulbs use the same fused silica arc tube as opposed to the alumina arc tube used in HPS but more on that in a minute. The main difference between mercury vapour bulbs and their metal halide offspring is the addition of metal halide compounds, also known as salts, within the arc tube itself. These compounds help improve the colour rendition and efficiency of the light produced, with each compound radiating its own frequency emission. Like HPS bulbs, metal halides also rely on a noble gas to strike the bulb when cold. But this time argon is preferred in place of xenon, except in certain applications like automotive, where lamps commonly referred to as xenon are in fact metal halide bulbs that use a pulse start technology, with xenon as the noble gas used, hence the name. It's preferred in cars as it's a very compact design and warms up much more quickly, but it's very costly as anyone that's had to replace a blown high intensity discharge headlamp will tell you. Metal halide bulbs became desirable in horticulture due to their very intense white light, but are used everywhere today, from retail lighting to stadium floodlighting. Grow lighting is a very small portion of their marketplace. The output of a metal halide bulb very much depends on the chemistry within the arc tube. Most metal halide bulbs use metal halide compounds of bromine or iodine. These compounds can also contain metals such as dysprosium, scandium, sodium, thallium, tin and lead in some cases. The iodides or bromides of metal halides that are used dictate the light that's produced. For instance, a metal halide lamp designed to be predominantly green uses thallium, whereas predominantly blue uses indium. The various mixtures of these metal halide compounds can produce a near infinite combination of spectra, but each has an effect on efficiency and bulb life. This broad spectra of chemistry sees metal halide bulbs range from anywhere between 5,000 to 15,000 hours of continuous use. The principal cause of metal halide bulb failure is an effect otherwise known as ion creep. Ion creep in MH bulbs is a common problem attributable to the use of fused silica arc tubes. The addition of metal halides to the mercury vapour causes some elements, such as sodium, to migrate to the quartz tube itself due to the intense levels of ultraviolet radiation as well as high rates of gas ionisation. This phenomenon can be observed as the arc tube getting darker or becoming rather opaque. This reduces the output of the bulb by not only blocking the light but also depleting the available light from the emitting material. Now somewhere out there is a smarty pants thinking to themselves, if the quartz is the problem then why not use a ceramic type arc like the ones that are used in HPS bulbs. In the mid 1980s, 
A new type of metal halide lamp was developed using a sintered alumina arc tube, similar to those used in HPS lamps. They are called ceramic metal halide bulbs, but are marketed to you and I as light emitting ceramics or LECs. We'll be testing these ceramic metal halides in an upcoming episode, but wanted you to understand the link between the two technologies. Now, in talking about bulb life, I should also mention that all the output figures I could find seem to be measured on a cycle of 11 hours on and one hour off, which seems to be quite the standard. The problem is, of course, that growers use cycles that are much more along the lines of a daylight cycle of, say, 12 hours on and 12 hours off. As far as I can tell, no one has data to tell how long an MH bulb will last in the 12-12 cycle, but we're trying to work out a test for a later episode. Now one last thing before we get to the test itself. Bulb seasoning. You may have heard that MH bulbs require a seasoning or break-in period of around 100 hours of continuous operation before settling into their specified outputs, and everything we discovered on technical sources suggests that this is indeed the case. However, it remains unclear whether some manufacturers do this seasoning in-house themselves, as only a few manufacturers' boxes suggest it needs doing at all. Seasoning refers to the first operation of the bulb during which it should not be switched off for a period of 100 continuous hours. But when we asked licensed professional growers about bulb seasoning, most were completely unaware it was necessary, and those that did certainly didn't run any of their bulbs for over 100 hours on its first use. This poses us with a problem. We want to give you the most accurate data possible, but we also want to recreate your grow conditions, and as most growers don't seem to season their bulbs, neither will we. That means that all the bulbs used in this test have not had the 100 hour seasoning period. Repeat, have not had the 100 hour seasoning period. Which is a good thing, because a 100 hour seasoning period on this many bulbs would mean a delay of months, and I know just how that would go down with you guys. So, when evaluating these results, please bear in mind they could be radically different after the seasoning period. As with our HPS Mega Test, we're using our standard canopy test at a height of 24 inches from the cosine receptor. For those who haven't watched part one, the canopy test consists of 25 samples from a five foot by five foot grid added together and then divided by 25 to get the grid average. Recorded test data will include 25 measurements from the five foot by five foot grid taken from 24 inches from the cosine receptor, the canopy average, the uniformity ratio, which is the most intense spot on the grid, divided by the least intense spot on the grid, the voltage and wattage drawn by the bulb and fixture, and the spectrometer's integration time used for the test. We also include recorded conditions data for those factors that are outside of our control but could affect the test. They include air temperature, both inside and outside the tent, humidity, both inside and outside the tent, and the air pressure on the day. Also for this test, we'll be using a Mogul extender as MH bulbs come in many shapes and sizes. These size differentials made it very difficult for us to center each of the bulbs within the fixture. So we concentrated on centering the fixture in order to get the readings instead of the bulb. Finally, to the results. As before, we wanted to test the top five selling bulbs in the first half of the year, but we ran into a problem. Monster Gardens only sells four metal halide bulbs, so we tested those. They are the Narva Necroma, the Ushio Hilux Grow, the Hortilux Blue, and the Genesis. Okay, here's where it gets weird versus the HPS test. You see, there are different spectrum bulbs available in Metal Halide. For 600 watts, it's the Hortilux Blue, which although it placed last in terms of intensity against the other three, its spectrum is so radically different, it doesn't really bear comparison to the others. This is actually a bigger problem at 1000 watts, as you'll come to see. Anyway, back to the task in hand. 
In third place is the Nava Necroma with the best uniformity ratio of the 600 watt test. In second place is the Ushio with a canopy average of 193.4 micromoles. Which means that the 600 watt winner is the Genesis MH with a stunning canopy average of 220.9 micromoles. This really is the beast of the group. So on to the 1000 watt category. Now as you know, we like to test the top five bulbs as sold on Monster Garden's website in the first half of the year. But in this test, we actually managed to source more bulbs than we were looking for. So we have eight bulbs to test in total. As with the 600 watt category, a few bulbs posed a few problems, as they were so radically different in spectra that an apples to apples comparison really didn't make sense. We'll be judging those on spectra and intensity separately from what we're calling the horsepower category. So now on to the spectra side of the test, and what we're going to do is firstly show you the intensity levels that the bulbs put out, and then analyze their spectra more closely. We actually have a head-to-head -head in this spectra category with the Hortilux Blue going up against the Solistec 10K. On the intensity side of the test, there really is what we call a dead heat between these two bulbs. The Solistec 10K with its canopy average of 338.3 micromoles just got beaten into second place by the Hortilux Blue with 338.8 micromoles. Half a micromole difference could be attributed to the weather, to the air pressure, to just about any other factor. So really, this intensity test is a tie. Even the uniformity ratio is 6.59 to 6.49. That is incredible. Now, if you're looking for raw intensity, neither of these bulbs will do you much good as they both play significantly lower than the horsepower category, which is why we separated them in the first place. These two bulbs seem to be more about the spectra that they're actually pushing out. Manufacturers alter the spectrum of a bulb by changing the chemistry within the arc tube. However, there's obviously an impact in intensity, so perhaps there's an impact in bulb life as well. Only time will tell. So just how weird are these bulbs? Well, here on the left, you see both the blue MH and the 10K MH from Hortilux and Solistec. But here on the right, we also have a Hortilux and a Solistec from the horsepower test. And as you can see, the spectral graphs are radically different. Both of these bulbs have spectral graphs that very closely mimic the sun. So the real question is, is the extra cost and expense of this type of bulb worth the loss in intensity? These bulbs are intriguing, don't get me wrong, but for production gardens, it's probably better to stick to horsepower bulbs for the time being. Speaking of horsepower, let's get down to the horsepower side of the 1000 watt category. We have six bulbs running in this test, four which Monster Garden sells and two which they don't. They are the Hortilux, the Genesis, two bulbs from Solis Tech, their 4K and their 6K, the Ultrasun and the Ushio. Bringing up the rear is the Ushio Hilux Grow Metal Halide with a canopy average of 363.4 micromoles. In fifth is the Ultrasun Metal Halide with a canopy average of 379.6 micromoles. In fourth place was the regular Hortilux Metal Halide with a canopy average of 382.8 micromoles. Winning the bronze medal is the Solis Tech 6K Metal Halide with a canopy average of 387.5 micromoles. In second place was the Solis Tech 4K Metal Halide with a canopy average of 424.1 micromoles. Very impressive. But not good enough to top this test. That was done by the Genesis 1000 Watt Metal Halide with a ridiculous 459.8 micromole average canopy which blows away the competition by an average of anywhere from 30 to 90 micromoles. That's huge. So there you have it, 
A double win for the Genesis Metal Halide at both 600 and 1000 watts. Quite stunning. That's it for this edition of Test Lab. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon with another edition looking at more grow lighting technology. Until then, don't forget to subscribe to the Monster Gardens channel. Come check out the monstergardens.com website. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.